Again, welcome to CS101, Introduction to Programming Using Python. This lab will cover chapter four of our course textbook. Our main objective is to use the repetition control structure or the loops to solve two problems. So let's see our first problem. Question number one, the bulk collector. Here we say a bulk collector collects box every day for five days. Write a program that keeps a running total of the number of box collected during the five days. The loop should ask for the number of box collected for each day. And when the loop is finished, the program should display the total number of box collected. Now, the reason why we are using a loop for this question, because we are going to ask the user to enter the number of box for five days, so five times. Now, since we know the number of times we want the loop to run, and the best loop to use will be the for loop. Then we can use the range function in the for loop. And the range in this case will be up to five from zero to four. So let's see the solution. First thing we do, we initialize our two variables. One variable for the box where the user may enter the number of box for each day. Then the variable total, this is where we are going to store the total number of box entered for the five days. So next, we ask the user to enter the number of box collected for each day. Now, because it's five days, our range function, the argument is five. So it's going to execute five times from zero to four. So here we say for day in range five, we ask the user, we are using the input function here. Then we ask the user, enter the number of box collected today. So when the user enter the number of box, we are going to convert it to int. Again, as we said earlier, the input function, the data that we enter, the data type will be string. So since we are going to do arithmetic operation, in this case addition, we convert it to int. Now, if it's a decimal number, we can convert it to float. But here, we are counting number of box, so it should be a whole number, so it's int. Then we say total equal to total plus box. So here we are using the compound operator. When we say total plus equal box, it means we are going to add the box into a total. And if there's any previous total, we add it more. So actually it will be total equal to total plus box. It's the same as writing total plus equal box. So after this for loop execute five times, we are going to get the final total. So for example, the first time our total is zero because we initialize it to zero. Let's say the user enter 20. So it will be zero plus 20. Next, the user enter 30. Then it will be 20 plus 30, which is 50. Next, the user enter 20. The previous total is 50 plus present will be 20, 70. So total equal to total plus box means we are going to add the new data into our previous total until the loop stop execution. This execution will take five times because again, the range is five from zero to four. So after we get the total, we come out of the loop, then we display the total number of box collected. So here we use the print function and we say the total box collected is the total value in the variable here. Again, this is a for loop as we mentioned in the lectures. A for loop can use a range function and the argument of the range will tell how many times the loop will execute. And the reason why we are using the for loop is because we know the number of times the loop will execute. Now, if we don't know the number of times the loop will be executing, then we can use the while loop with a sentinel value. So let's look at our second problem. Our second problem is calories burn. So you're running on a particular treadmill you burn 4.2 calories per minute. Write a program that uses a loop to display the number of calories burned after 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 minutes. Again, the reason, the reason why we are using loop because we have to find the calorie for 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30, so five times. So that's why we are using a loop. 
Again, in the lectures, we always use the loops or repetition control structures if we have to do something multiple times and the same thing multiple times. So let's start with the solution. Here, the first thing we're going to declare initialize a variable for, for the calories burned per minute. And here the question said the calories burned per minute is 4.2. So the variable name is calories per minute. We assign 4.2 to it. Now we declare variables for the number of calories burned and also the number of minutes. So we have a variable name calorie burned and also minutes. Again, we initialize both to zero to make sure there's no value. So next we are going to execute the for loop to display the calories. So here again, we are going to have our answers for 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 minutes. So here we say for minutes in range 10 to 31 and five, the reason why we are using these three values, 10 means we are starting from 10 minutes as we can see in our question. And also we end at 30, but as we said in the range, if it's, five, it will go from zero to four. If it's 30, then up to 29. So that's why we are using 31. And this will be the interval because we can see from 10 to 15, 15 to 20. So the difference is every time the loop is acute, it's going to add five to it. So we move from 10 to 15, to 20, to 25, and 30. So that's why the range have three values here. The first is the beginning, the second value is the end, and the third value will be the interval between each. So now we have the formula given to us. The calorie burn is equal to the calorie per minute times the minutes, because we know it's 4.2 per minute. So if it's 10, then it will be 4.2 times 10. And we may have the steepness will be 15, then it will be 4.2 times 15. Every time again, the loop range, we are adding five minutes to the value until we reach 30. So then when we finish, we can display the results. So here we need, we can see the previous question, we need only one result, the total, the total again, and uh, let's go back. In our previous question here, we need a total box for the whole five days. So we display the result only once outside the for loop. And so by here, we are you can see that we are displaying the result inside the for loop because we want to know the calorie burn for each minute, 10 minutes, 15, 20. So here we are going to display five results. So every time we calculate for 10 minutes, we display the result for 15 minutes, for 20 minutes, for 30, we display the results. So again, here, the print function is inside the for loop because every round we want to display the result we get. Now, if we need only the final result, then we can bring the print function outside the for loop. So that would be the conclusion of this lecture. So. So in this lab work, again, we went through a very simple two programs on how to use a for loop to solve a problem. Thank you.